Friends, good evening. Today is the seventh installment of the Dao Dodo Lecture Series. And at present, it is dedicated to a highly interesting topic that is extremely popular and widely discussed in the realm of business. Probably, uh, this is one of my favorite topics. When I see an article or a business case about mistakes, about failures in business, about analysis, it is always very interesting to read. And today I would like to discuss mistakes. Mistakes in business are more important than victories. This is an important thesis because victories can happen and successes can be attributed to certain factors that contribute to growth. As the saying goes, a rising tide lifts all boats. Mistakes are bound to happen from time to time uh, from the actions we have taken. Additionally, they impart valuable knowledge and help to educate us on important matters. It's so transpired that we glean less wisdom from triumphs than from mistakes. And I am able to affirm that errors in business are essentially equivalent to obtaining my Master of Business Administration degree. I can state that arguably the most significant experience I obtained was thanks to mistakes, because through making mistakes, you acquire valuable knowledge and insights. These are not just knowledge, these are conscious knowledge, because you can read a lot of books, but the information you receive will not be stored in your head as insights, as some conscious knowledge and reflection on your own actions really leads to solid knowledge that leads to further development, transition to a new level of business, to a new level of thinking, and ultimately contributes to personal growth and success in various aspects of life. Therefore, mistakes are very important, but what needs to be done for a mistake to become knowledge? Because an error, if not transformed into knowledge, becomes a loss. The most crucial and vital thing is to acknowledge this error because our psychology, ego, and inherent biases often prevent us from acknowledging and learning from the error, thereby hindering our personal and professional growth. This is a question of thinking, and thus it is highly crucial that the culture of the company, and in our company, it is currently existing and it must be maintained, operated in a manner that it was comfortable because individuals shared and discussed their errors and contemplated on them. It is crucial that in the company, we comprehend that all individuals, including key leaders and SEO specialists, have the ability to make errors, which they can readily acknowledge. In general, in many cultures, admitting a mistake is considered a weakness. But from my point of view, public acknowledgement of a mistake, drawing conclusions, taking responsibility for it, is an indicator of inner strength. I personally have encountered a situation where our company operates in numerous countries, bringing together individuals from a variety of cultures and backgrounds. I have come across situations where our colleagues from China have told me that it is amazing that in our company you can be criticized or publicly admit a mistake, which is quite atypical for a Chinese company. I also think that this, uh, this is not particularly typical for a Russian company either, but I firmly believe that it is a strength. Therefore, we should fully support a culture that tolerates mistakes and treats them as a great value. Embracing mistakes and recognizing them as valuable learning opportunities is crucial for our growth and development as a company. One of the elements that help maintain this culture is the lack of penalties for mistakes. Due to the unpredictable nature of business, it is common for individuals to be unsure of how to act appropriately. Making mistakes is a normal part of the process, and while there may be consequences, they are not always financial in nature. Psychological penalties can also play a role, causing people to feel compelled to hide their actions due to the inherent stress involved. By concealing the mistake even from yourself, by hiding it, you do not gain any knowledge or insights. I can say that our company's risk is that we often become hostages of good news. We have an open company, we have a culture. Share your victories, inspire colleagues, and share your successes to inspire your colleagues. Often this leads to the fact that Dota News, this Dota brand, is an endless flow of information. I think that in our company, we can easily become prisoners of good news, as we have a tendency to focus on problems. We frequently interpret certain information in a way that favors positive outcomes in our business. It is not a bad situation, but we should not get carried away with it, and we do not need to be afraid of appearing as a failure or letting it define us. We do not have any losers. We possess information, and I have already stated that a mistake is a source of knowledge. It is a means of moving forward. 
Hence, um, I believe that our company ought to implement certain rituals that would foster an environment for discussing mistakes. I would recommend that leaders of the company begin implementing certain rules when discussing the outcomes of errors, gathering and stating, gentlemen, we truly made a major mistake. I want to share this with you, this valuable information. Uh, why the ritual? Because everything that is psychologically difficult, that is the nature. We will avoid this. We are individuals. However, the ceremony, certain regulations compel him to adhere to it, and as a result, you are unable to evade it. This will once again help us stay in shape, ensuring we don't become hostages of overly positive news. Hey friends, can you tell me what mistakes are? Uh, it seems like such a negative word, and I'm curious to understand its true meaning. When I was prepping for this lecture, I asked some colleagues about the mistakes we had made. This is a tag cloud. Uh, I was included in a variety of different projects that required my expertise. Dodo Pizza Express is a format in a food court, Dodo Pizza and Coffee, Dodo in the United Kingdom, the United States format, our experiments with small towns, China, food courts. Is this an error? Without a doubt, above all, it is knowledge and understanding that are of utmost importance. We have obtained a tremendous amount of knowledge. Even if these projects did not lead to growth and were eventually closed, they definitely contributed to shaping us into the individuals we are now. They provided us with knowledge. We must comprehend that every piece of knowledge comes with a cost. And before launching any experiment, any startup in a company or any startup project within a product, we must fully understand and evaluate how much it will ultimately cost us. And in case we, it will transpire that this experiment will not be successful, we must be ready to forfeit all we have invested there. That is the company. We should not be afraid to experiment but the magnitude of experiments should not destroy the company. And we should not, uh, I formulated it like this, we should be ready to lose everything except knowledge because the loss of knowledge is the most terrible. Uh, and it is crucial that we keep knowledge. We need to share cases. Uh, however, uh, let's get back to our experimental different branches, projects, can we call it mistakes or valuable learning experiences? You know, it's difficult to state that these are errors because well, let's say at least some of these projects that I listed, because firstly, if we did not proceed with this course of experiments, is it even worthwhile to conduct experiments in the future? After hearing my last two lectures, some individuals approached me asking, they said, Fyodor, does it mean you don't have to go anywhere at all, but instead focus completely on what we've been doing from the very beginning? Uh, and what if what we were doing from the outset was strategically mistaken? Why can't we carry out experiments? You know, there is a phrase, if you, as they say, do not correct strategic mistakes with tactical decisions, if you sit on the wrong horse, regardless of how you improve it, it will still ride poorly in spite of your efforts. Should we conduct experiments in the future? What have we learned? It's worth it because life and business are like a kaleidoscope. And when the wheel rotates, nobody has any idea of how the circumstances will unfold and evolve in the future. Uh, you are aware that the development of our business is determined, of course, by us, our actions, but also by the circumstances that occur around us and impact our progress. Uh, markets are changing, mm, geopolitical changes are happening, and no one knows what would have happened if we had removed all the experiments we had. Uh, firstly, how the history of Dodo would have developed and whether we would have been able to attract investments. Without Dodo Pizza in the USA, could we develop international business without starting a project in the USA? Which showed us that it is possible. You have the chance to take and start a project abroad, and there are individuals in that location who place orders for pizza, and there are no limits to what can be accomplished. Is it possible to launch Britain without a project in China? Uh, it was in China that we introduced frozen dough Roman pizza, which we subsequently brought to the United Kingdom. Modern, seemingly efficient format, but now there is no Great Britain. But could Britain have changed the course of the company's development if geopolitical events had unfolded differently? Probably, yes. Uh, because if the situation were different and the story started to develop differently, then a strong, interesting concept of Great Britain uh, with the base we currently have in Eurasia might have steered the company's development in a different direction. It was also a powerful development, but history has no 
uh, subjunctive moods. And development is such a you know, kaleidoscope of circumstances that come together. And at the moment of changing these circumstances, our experience, our knowledge, all of this leads to some development, which depending on these circumstances is unique. But our experience and knowledge influence this. The more experience and knowledge we have, the better we can react to these circumstances. I am frequently asked what I would change in the past, given the current information regarding business and life. I always respond so that without our experience and past, we wouldn't be in our current state because if something changed in the past, we'd already be different today. We don't know what. And most importantly, I wouldn't frame this question like that, my friends. Look, this is crucial. Not that I changed in the past, but how to act now in the current circumstances which exist having the experience of the past. And when I spoke in prior lectures regarding the necessity to enhance the existing format, I was referring to the importance of taking into account the current circumstances and the knowledge we have at present, which indicates that international business is highly intricate and requires careful consideration. Developing two concepts with our available resources is extremely challenging. And as a result, we must concentrate. And having Eurasia today, having the opportunity to build a new future based on the experience we have, I believe that we need to focus on the current concept. Here is the answer. That is, what to do now with past experience, but I digressed a bit about the analysis. In general, experiments, mistakes or not. But friends, conclusion, not probably, but my conclusion is to conduct experiments. Scared? Experiments definitely give us knowledge. And depending on changing circumstances, having the experience that we have, we can act differently. Therefore, naturally, I am not stating that the circumstances in the future and our resources, our knowledge can change and we may once again return to the Roman test. Uh, but again, I, I suggest not to think about it as these circumstances aren't present now, our knowledge. Go back to business mistakes. So, in general, I believe that the primary mistakes in business are made due to the inherent nature of ordinary human beings. We can construct enormous corporations, we can possess substantial resources, we can exert influence over millions of individuals, but colossal corporations, historical evidence demonstrates and analyzing our past errors disintegrate due to ordinary human weaknesses caused by excessive self-confidence. And on occasion, because of arrogance, personal ambitions and ego that does not allow for recognizing the same mistakes due to human greed and the desire to achieve results more quickly because of an unwillingness to admit mistakes or step out of the comfort zone and a reluctance to embrace change or explore new possibilities at times, purely due to banal laziness. And my belief is that it is precisely the inherent nature of human beings, irrespective of their geographical location, that drives them to make these mistakes. And on this day, I would like to share with you the top mistakes I've made and carefully analyze these cases in order to gain valuable insights and learn from them for future reference. Many, once again, various aspects of these cases are not directly related to human nature, but rather to the decisions made in the context of business, but it is always a kind of mixture or combination. Let's begin with the third position in my ranking, starting with number three. Move to 2019. We have already achieved a level of performance that is significantly superior to our competitors in the Russian market. You observe data for 2019. We had a very rapid growth in 2017, 2017, and 2019. Dodo Pizza was booming then. We were growing. It was the 19th century. The pizza industry was booming there at that moment. We were consistently expanding. We established new places. The revenues of our pizzerias were increasing. And there was a tremendous amount of enthusiasm. We have a span of two years prior to 2019, during which we observed remarkable growth in numbers, such as the rating of comparable sales. So each of our pizza shops, on average, experienced growth in revenue and the number of orders from year to year. And this increase in revenue was also connected to the fact that we consistently, although not every day, but there was such a tendency, raised prices on a regular basis. And we got used to growth. We got used to the fact that no matter how much we raise prices, the market allows people to still buy our product and we will experience growth. And in the year 2018, the decline commences. And in the spring of 2019, we arrive at the point where our like-for-like like comparison on orders not only comes to a halt, it becomes negative, we start to lose the market share. 
this situation occurs because the most significant reason we overslept the availability, we realized that the market has changed, but we have not adapted. At first, our approach was to consistently raise prices under the assumption that the pizza market had low elasticity and that demand would not be significantly affected. However, we also failed to observe that in Russia, the incomes of the population started to decrease, indicating a prior period of substantial growth and a highly favorable market situation. And in the year 2019, our income started to decline. In fact, we began receiving a significant number of reviews from our customers stating that we have, in fact, become a very expensive and costly brand. And ultimately, we had such an advertisement that was funded by the federal government. Kaliningrad is not abroad, but the delivery is to Dupitsa. And ultimately, I managed to find such a review. All salary will be dissolved and delivery will be added. We overlooked the changes. Accessibility did not become a strategic priority for us. And we constantly made such tactical changes. The situation has become really critical because we started going downhill. We started losing the market. Some serious changes needed to be made. We started in the spring at the beginning of summer to analyze and saw that indeed we became more expensive than the market. As an illustration, in our restaurant, roughly 64% of checks 65% of checks are approximately around 450 rubles in terms of value compared to McDonald's where it was 150 rubles, 200 rubles. That is, at that time, we were almost twice as expensive. We were perceived as very inaccessible. And in fact, we made such a complete turnaround in the summer of 2019, did not forget so. Initiated a sizable program, implemented substantial modifications in marketing, introduced the Dodo Accessibility Program. Actually, it was a large program not all of the solutions there were highly efficient, but overall it had an impact on everything, including both delivery and the restaurant. And in reality, the introduction of Combo has made an appearance in our menu. As a matter of fact, uh, we have taken a very active approach to promotion to accessibility uh, in Diamond in the restaurant. And in fact, the situation started to change. And starting from October 2019, the efforts we have made have produced outcomes. And actually, Like4Like for like started to recover with us. And then we returned to a good growth Like4Like, for like, which again became two digit. And in principle, Like4Like like still continues to this day. Currently, we pay close attention to accessibility and generally understand that in our segment, accessibility is one of the primary unique selling points. What are the reasons behind this case and the final conclusions? Look, I would phrase it as we yielded to the pressure exerted by our partners, whom we had an inherent inclination to satisfy and appease due to the strong bond we shared. To earn more or maintain the same income despite increased expenses due to their perception of our deteriorating economy, we yielded to pressure and increased prices succumbing to the need for financial stability in a challenging economic climate. For specific short-term goals, we sacrificed long-term prices to increase short-term profits. We took these small steps that eventually led to crossing a certain line and started experiencing a decline in our market share. Rather than continuing to search, we should have examined our expenses, focused on efficiency, and possibly even considered reducing prices in order to increase turnover and enhance profitability through improved efficiency. However, under the pressure we faced, we made the mistake of succumbing to the pressure and raising prices instead. Simultaneously desire. I believe that here also exists such a purely human characteristic. We are good people. We desire good relationships. And it is this desire to be good for everyone and psychological. The unwillingness to conflict because it is a dispute it is a conflict with a partner led to the fact that we made these concessions and did not see the big picture. I believe one of the reasons is the same human story. The unwillingness to take responsibility for decisions that are not popular. It is essential to comprehend that numerous decisions in business will not be well liked. And the responsible approach is to assume responsibility for them and provide an explanation. Not be afraid of these constructive conflicts. Because any contradiction, no matter how small, should be explained sell the benefits of these long-term solutions to our partners, colleagues, and continue to assume responsibility for them without hesitation.
Well, as I've already mentioned, we've resolved the situation and this should serve as an important lesson for us, uh, this particular case. We proceed to the second case, which is specifically dedicated to donor number 42 in our discussion. Let me now endeavor to clearly state the history, decision-making logic, and what our big idea was when we launched Donor 42, our groundbreaking initiative aimed at revolutionizing philanthropy and making a profound impact on the lives of those in need. We desired to select a transparent, well-known popular product that every individual in Russia is acquainted with and adores. Make alterations to the format, shift away from the familiar kiosks with small areas characterized by insecurity, a lack of safety, and some cleanliness issues and strive to create such a modern, fast, casual concept that is both innovative and appealing to customers. We were inspired by the story of Chipotle, an American chain that took the Mexican food product known as the burrito and successfully incorporated it into their menu. And in fact, employing the technique of a technological enterprise, he established a remarkably impressive network. Simultaneously, this product appears to be comparable to shawarma. Chipotle is in a higher segment than McDonald's. There is fast casual dining. Fast casual dining is a segment that is more expensive than the classic quick service restaurant QSR segment. However, for individuals who require a straightforward democratic service, but simultaneously have a willingness to invest additional funds in exchange for a superior quality and freshly sourced product. And here we are opening our first experimental location in Moscow at Okyabrskoye Pole, which was quite small. 63 square meters with a very small hall. And fairly quickly, in the manner that we comprehend, we initiated within the concept of fast casual, I mean fast casual dining. This is a focus on a cool gastronomic product with a good taste, and at the same time, with not the lowest quick service restaurant price for the market. That is, in other words, this is an assessment and the merchandise is more costly than in McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC fast food restaurants. We rapidly come across revenue limitations. That is to say, we reach a specific upper limit after which revenue ceases to increase. We, we have a hypothesis and a small point at that, that the number of seats in the hall correlates with revenue because it is still a dining concept. And if you have very few seats, no matter how hard you try, you reach a certain ceiling that corresponds to the number of seats in the hall. Because if a person comes and there are no available seats in the hall, they cannot be accommodated. And this affects the potential revenue of the establishment. Limited, that is. He won't stay there, and next time he won't come, as he knows it's impossible to sit there. There isn't much space. We examined all of the formats that were available to us, close in approximately the same segment region. All of them had halls that were sufficiently large. At Tremok, at KFC, and comprehended that our hypothesis was that we require a greater number of halls in point of fact, subsequent to that, we devised the notion of extensive restaurants with ample seating capacity. And the second output, which we arrived at by executing the initial step, is the finding that labor productivity is a crucial and influential factor in this particular context. Shawarma, as for product, it'll always be. The speed is slower compared to that of a burger. Assembles very rapidly, just like a constructor does. And that is why we are making efforts in principle. The time taken to produce one unit is greater than the time taken in the typical burger fast food restaurant or KFC restaurant, and therefore we will not be able to earn on. Regarding the volumes, while our competitors are earning profits, Tom, please check if they have it. We chose for ourselves. We need to find a balanced position that represents a midpoint between classic and modern styles. QSR, and in reality such an expensive gastro fast food quick service restaurant type of ground meat made from minced meat which is already with a high bill, we must be somewhere in the middle. Assuming a market is present, we'll have fewer orders than McDonald's, but price will be slightly higher. And thanks to this equilibrium, our model will expand in unison. Actually, uh, we went into a fairly high segment with a cool product. Uh, the donor team did a very cool job on the design and products. There was a great deal of impressive work accomplished at that location. However, what did we obtain? The revenue has now reached a specific limit. And during the period of March and April in the year 2022, we commenced to witness a gradual upturn in the level of revenue that we were generating. Prior, she was about three millions. Then the growth of this revenue commenced to increase. However, this growth occurred during a period when the circumstances were favorable. And what this should. And actually, the growth primarily associated with this market redistribution, we took as an indication that our concept is starting to grow. And at this particular moment, 
we make the decision that we are prepared for the process of scaling up. And now the growth of our partners, increasing the number of points, increasing the scale, which will lead to the possibility of purchasing improvements, building logistics, improving the brand will lead to brand growth. And we begin the process of opening multiple points of access. Awesome collaborators are coming on board to support the donor. What do we see? What does it mean? Points of interest receive a fairly large amount immediately. Revenue, and then it starts to decline moreover. A decrease in all cities. And in fact, this indicates that it is currently decreasing enough. It is crucial that as we engage ourselves in quality and flavor, we comprehend that. All in all, the product is undeniably good when it comes to its taste and flavor, leaving no room for disappointment. However, the client base is not experiencing any growth. Because if the customer base were growing, sales would gradually start to increase. So individuals do not return for a certain reason. And in fact, this phenomenon happens in every single city. Uh, our presence somewhere, the revenue decreases significantly enough. You see, I am displaying you sales charts. And uh, those who lack many, they closed. It turns out St. Petersburg, our first location in St. Petersburg closed for the fourth consecutive month. What do we get? What do we grasp in fall? In 2022, when we analyzed the sales, we found that there is no ready-made fast casual shawarma market in Russia, unfortunately. Significant word is now prepared. I'm sure we could. As extraordinary efforts were made to create this remarkable achievement market with the purpose of teaching and educating people. However, this statement expresses the necessary information. Effort was needed, a lot was required. Um, I would invest a substantial amount of money, effort, and time into this, despite the fact that at this spot, we were swimming against the current. It transpired that the price plays an exceedingly significant role in this particular segment, and the market for gastro shawarma, a type of Middle Eastern cuisine with a higher check and increased demand, is extremely tiny and inadequate for our company to construct a sizable network. As a consequence, we have temporarily suspended the development of Donor42 and commenced the process of rebooting the concept. At this moment, with the knowledge we currently possess, we are actively engaged in working on a new version of the shawarma concept, utilizing all of our expertise and insights. I will not reveal the cards in this lecture right now, but right now we are working on the second point that we are launching. The command is initiated by Natalia Stepanova, a small yet tenacious individual with a strong sense of purpose. And I believe you will witness in the upcoming month and a half. This time, we have decided to keep a small secret about what we are doing. We should analyze the reasons for our failures with Donor42 in order to learn from our mistakes and improve our future performance. The most crucial aspect of our actions was gaining knowledge. At that time, we had no idea whether this market actually existed or not. It is uncertain. The circumstances were in flux during the launch process. Why did we rush? Why did we commence to open with partners in advance of the scheduled time frame? I believe that the crucial aspect, this temporary surge in spring 2022, provided us with excessive optimism. Excessive optimism is also a human characteristic for us in general. And we interpreted it as a success of the concept without delving too deeply, without waiting any further. And the reasons for this are the desire for rapid growth. We were all in a hurry. We are there. We hurried ourselves because we constantly desire significant objectives and rapid expansion. Dodo is a company about growth and this impatience, including a company that was waiting, let's scale faster, let's grow. It all affected us. There was a certain pressure from partners who were saying, guys, everything is so cool with you. Look, there's growth. I am prepared to take risks. Let us commence. And this also undermined our cold reason to a certain extent, albeit only slightly. At this moment, I would like to express that we are in need of adopting a more careful approach in order to avoid yielding to this pressure and excessive optimism and understanding that scaling cannot be rolled back. And here is a crucial question, how to find a balance between caution and determination in business, because you can be too cautious, wait too long, you can be too determined and start too early. Friends, here is only experience. Business is not a science, it is an art form. And in each specific situation, once again, relying on previous experience, previous mistakes, every single time make a brand new decision. There is no algorithm present. However, the course of action I would have taken 
is to continue waiting and establish another location either in a different region or in the Moscow region in order to observe the effectiveness of the concept. What else would I do, pals? Check it out. I would now reach the inference that establishing an entirely fresh format in the market is a significant risk for a company that initiates a startup, invests a great deal, and essentially commences a startup within Dodo Brands. We need a one-on-one -on -one shot. You expect from us that every project of ours will be successful. However, the probability of not guessing correctly is extremely elevated. I would opt to replicate the existing successful approach, which is entirely acceptable as we enhance it with our own concepts, advancements, and technologies. In reality, the story of our Drinkit project is like this because we based it on an existing working model that we had, and we are already prohibiting it once more. We truly make it distinct, but the underlying basis is functioning. No risk present. We decided to proceed with the donor, taking into account the fast casual format of this expensive shawarma and the existence of a market for it in Russia. However, this decision was incorrect. Presently, I will most likely observe what is effective in the market. If there is no market of this format, then it is highly probable that the market is not yet ready to embrace it at this point in time. We need to take, identify what works and strive to make it even better discover small spots with delicious yet inexpensive shawarma options, or you could consider acquiring a functional model that is already operational in order to enhance its coolness and improve it within our company's operations. But again, this does not mean, look, you'll have an explosion of the morgue now, always need to act like this, what is always unavailable. Not needed by the market. Uh, when I started Dodo Pizza and Siktivkar, there were almost no pizza deliveries there. And everyone informed me, Fedor, that she is not necessary here and no one will order pizza. Therefore, once again, it is always necessary to consider the context. And there are no absolute rules in business, unfortunately or fortunately. Friends, at this moment, let's focus on case number one, our most crucial mistake. And it is certain that we will make similar mistakes again in the future. I desire to give a warning to all today to avoid having such mistakes any longer or else we will consistently possess comprehension about it at all times. Autumn 2021, we are the absolute leaders in the Russian Federation. We are leaders in Moscow, in a market where it was exceedingly difficult to develop, where it was exceedingly difficult to enter and establish a presence. We consider ourselves incredibly cool. We are a massive brand. We are such a highly respected and prestigious big company in our industry. And I arrive at a typical pizzeria in Moscow located in a residential neighborhood, and I find myself in a children's room, specifically a playroom. And what I see, my friends, almost brings tears to my eyes because I understand that what I capture there cannot happen in a single day. It requires time, effort, and patience to witness such moments unfold before my lens. This is a room for kids. It ruins everything because I recall how I used to inform clients and guests that we aim to create a product that I would enjoy treating my friends and children to. The design and atmosphere of the room should be appealing to children and make them feel special, just like I would want for my own kids. When I arrive there, I'm taken aback by the sight of dirty, unwashed, and torn pillows that greet me. The general consensus is that the prevailing sentiment towards it is that it is just kind of awful in every possible way. And I comprehend that our significant presentation strategies, numbers, quality control system, checks, ratings, quality oath, which hangs in the pizzeria, they signify nothing, because this is Moscow, friends and acquaintances. This is not some distant city that we don't go to. This is Moscow, where our office is located, where we have a business developer. And this is a drop that mirrors the entire sea. Because if it occurred, it signifies it can occur again. And it mirrors what is presently happening. I ask myself, how did we allow this? And I start analyzing. I understand that no one wanted to do this. We lack indifference. Instead, we have a considerable number of individuals who are actively engaged, highly sincere. I came to the realization that this situation is akin to a trap where we are reluctant to step out of our comfort zone. We confine ourselves to the office, interacting with partners solely within that setting. When we arrive at the pizzeria and witness a scene like this for some unknown reason, we refrain from deliberately shutting our eyes, not out of a desire for personal gain, but due to a certain apprehension of confrontation as we are compelled to confront this issue to assert that it must be resolved and to express our need for action. Demanding is always tough. It's a psychological escape from challenging tasks as this tangle requires unraveling and is linked to a partner, 
it's easier to forget. And I realize this is a gap between the office and the real business. Because I'll restate, a real product isn't made in presentations, it's made in specific pizzerias, it's an experience of people. And everything we do reflects everything that people get in pizzerias and see in pizzerias. They create a false illusion, as it seems to us, friends, that we are leaders, everything is cool for us, no need to go to pizzerias, only some stress is there. Why should I go there? Consciousness says, don't go there. We have cool numbers. You know, I listened to an interview with Sergei Galitsky. He is a great businessman, but I disagreed with him because he said that I don't go to my own stores. I have lots of numbers. He stumbles. It was an interview, and then he lost the Piatarochka market. Piatarochka surpassed it. It started making more comfortable stores, cleaner, brighter, and changed the design form, layout, and it started working. And I'm sure you need to go to pizzerias, you need to go to stores, because you need to see how your product is seen in reality, because you are the same customer. If your product is not being purchased, if you do not like it, then in the long run, you will experience loss. We will experience loss, because figures reflect only the current state of what we have done after that. Well, look, the first thing I did, as I already said at the beginning, I admitted a mistake. Something was wrong. First of all, it was my mistake. I admitted it publicly. I set fire to the bridges in order to eliminate any possibility of repairing them. And in reality, acknowledging an error is typically the initial stage towards development and enhancement. And then I started to, uh, to come up with some, uh, again, systemic mechanisms, rituals, so that it would not happen again. I have a vivid memory of firmly insisting that all meetings with, I mean, quarterly meetings with SEO Eurasia would consistently take place in the office, not in the office, but in various pizzerias around the city. We will meet at a random pizzeria, and this will be part of speech, because it doesn't matter what numbers we are shown. More precisely, it is crucial, but more crucial is how this pizzeria looks, how this random slice looks. In the next moment, it was crucial for me and all individuals to demonstrate that we must not make concessions when it comes to our principles. And so it occurred that at that particular moment, we had a situation with a partner in Yaroslavl uh, who was engaging in deceitful and principle violating behavior uh, the pizzerias were functioning extremely poorly and we reached a decision based on our principles to shut down the pizzerias we shut them we emerged victorious in all the legal proceedings and demonstrated to both the market and our partners that we are fully prepared to take action based on our core principles and we were not afraid of the conflict uh, if you comprehend that the position is of great importance to you it is a fundamental principle uh, then there is no necessity to be afraid of conflicts. And everything I'm talking about is a serious challenge for our future. We will grow, we will transform into an even more respectable company. And it is crucial to never forget that our business, it is present, it can be found in pizzerias, coffee shops. It is reflected in the smiles of our guests, in the smiles of our pizza makers, our baristas, and in every aspect of our operations. And the numbers, they all come after. They are all the consequence. This is an investigation. Therefore, my question to all colleagues is, have you been to pizzerias recently? Even if you are not involved in management, information technology, or legal work, come to pizzerias, do not be indifferent. If something is wrong, speak up, report it. It all depends on us. Our collective effort is crucial in addressing any issues that may arise. Together, we can ensure the integrity and success of our organization.